Hey everybody, how you guys doing? Pastor Joey, Meredith Zamora here, pastors of Cornerstone Church in the Tri-Cities area. Listen, we just want to uh, just thank you for tuning in. It is Wednesday night, Meredith. It is Wednesday and we are glad to be with you. I Absolutely. hope everybody had an awesome Easter and it has awesome. been a good week. The weather is good. The sun is shining. Sun it's is always shining. a thank good God. thing. The fishing is still closed. Yes. You don't need to pray for me. They need no. to reopen. Why is it I can go to Lowe's with a thousand people and I can't be in my bass boat for with two people. I, I don't get that yet. And okay. I, I don't need to get it. It's okay. Because the governor said no. Because the, and I'm a man of authority and I can submit to authority barely, but we can get it done. We got it. Anyway, We're good. <laughs> greetings all the way from Washington State, wherever you're watching, those yes. of our friends from Africa, Asia, Europe, uh, West Coast, South East America. Coast, South America. It doesn't matter where you're at where you find yourself at home, quarantine. Listen, we have a word for you. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. But Absolutely. anyway, what's been going on in your world, Meredith, before we get started? <laughs> Just trying to survive nothing. Um, it has been an interesting season. I think um, the process of quarantine and all the things we've been in is interesting. I know Easter looked different for all of us Ooh. this year. Um, it was great to have the kids and have the family, but I know a lot of people didn't have that. Right. And just the pressures of everything. I, I did a poll on my Instagram page the other day and just asked people if they they felt like they were working harder mm -hmm. or if it was easier in the season and what overwhelmingly it's harder it's harder it's harder yeah. and I find myself in that same place where it feels like it should be a vacation like it should be spring break it should be summer mm -hmm. break but yet you find yourself working harder to do the things you've always done because you have to do them different and even the fact that we've had to learn so much in the learning curve of online stuff which right. we were familiar with and understood the language of it but yeah. to make that the only way that you do service has been a challenge I, yeah. I was trying to explain to somebody I said it's like Spanish to me I know enough of it to understand but I'm not fluent enough to speak the, to speak it clearly and it's kind of been that season like you're learning another language thrown into another situation there's people that are at home still working full-time jobs right. now homeschooling not voluntarily they have been mandated to do it and right. trying to make it all work so right. we just wanted to come and encourage you this morning we Absolutely. get it there's a lot of challenges and we love you that say this is an easier season we bless you and we ask you to pray for all of us that are working hard and so yeah, anyway we've been ch i've been ch you know i've been taking um at nine o'clock between nine and uh, nine thirty eleven I go on prayer walks and I just challenge any of you guys to maybe just do, maybe you don't have to do a five mile prayer walk the way I do it, which, you know, takes me, I run usually about two miles and then I walk about three miles. Um, but it's a time for me to just contemplate, clear my mind, get, get along with the Lord, get away from Meredith and the kids and everybody else. But it's just a way to clear my mind. I challenge you um, just if you have to start by walking around the block, walking a mile, walking half a mile, whatever it is, but clear Absolutely. your mind, take take some time to exercise, get a, get some time to be and spend with the Lord. And listen, it's going to be the prayer of the saints that are going to change sure. the, 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 the trajectory, the trajectory of, this. of this whole epidemic thing that is taking yeah. place in our world. It's the prayer of the saints that still holds power. Us believing in the power, the blood of Jesus, the power yeah. of his word, and the power of Jesus' name. Yeah. And so we believe that with all of our Absolutely. heart. We teach that. We preach that, Meredith. Yep, and, and we've so experienced I, it. We've, experienced we've watched that. it in our lives, yeah. and we've lived long enough, never through anything like this. None yeah. of us yeah, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we've lived long enough to know that prayer can change the, the the speed of things Absolutely. it can change the time limits it can change what government and everybody else says which listen i respect right. and i honor what they do doctors and right. all the rest but right. prayer is also another factor that they Absolutely. don't know how to factor in but it becomes this abs it is and it's this miraculous part of it that can change the speed and the course of right. things and so listen regardless mm -hmm. of the hour we find ourselves in it is not an hour to quit praying it's an hour to keep praying. Come on. If anything, it's a time to amplify yeah. and mingle with fire what God has put in our hearts. Amen. But listen, I got a word for you. Meredith and yeah. I, we're going we're gonna to interject. Um, I give her permission to interject anytime she wants to. 
while I'm preaching because I do it to her all the time. And so, Meredith, we, we did something last Wednesday about yeah. it is finished. And so we want to do it is finished um, too. And so part two, the, part, yeah. this part two of, of, of the series, that we're, a small little series that we do on Wednesday night on a bounce back. But um, I, don't, I don't know if we're going to call We're, we're going to get rid of the bounce back. Probably we got done with that, I think, on Easter Sunday. But, but anyway, there's some thoughts that I really... Um, started thinking about that maybe perhaps would be really um, good for you sure. to bring application to your life that would help you, um, you know, in, in your everyday walk with the Lord. And so uh, if you got your Bibles, listen, you can be really a big asset to us. Um, for those of you that are, 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 are not familiar with Cornerstone Church, you can follow Meredith and I and Cornerstone Church at any at Instagram, at, at, um, at Facebook and at Twitter. Twitter. You can find us on there. Please be our friend we would love for you to be our friend and follow us in the church and there YouTube. and on youtube you can subscribe to the youtube channel there and you can get all of these sermons for free so um i, I just advise you that you can share that please today comment give me some hearts meredith and i some yeah. hearts and thumbs up like, if you like what know. we're doing and please share this with a friend share this with your family create a party as we come on our midweek service okay or anytime that we gather please share this sure. It helps us get the word out. So if you got your Bibles right now, uh, I'm reading out the New King James Version, but in John chapter 19 and verse 30, obviously it's the point where Jesus is at the cross. He tells his mother um, to behold her son, which is John, um, John the beloved. And then he tells John the beloved, behold your mother. Um, and, then, and then he goes on to say, so when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And the Bible says, and bowing his head, he gave up his, the, he gave up his spirit. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. But he said, it is finished. I want to, for the next 30 minutes or so, we want to talk on the subject of it is finished. And so I want to talk about the Greek word there um, for it is finished denotes three things that I really think are significant to um to our walk with the lord and if you can understand it the greek words and the hebrew words are, are profound in that yes, that when you do word studies it opens up it's kind of like a flower that just begins to blossom and open up and give its fragrance and that's why the word of god is so powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword as yes, the bible it says and it pierces through soul and spirit joint and marrow and it becomes a discerner of the very intent of the heart and the reason why we have to be so in love with the word is because it does come into the heart. When God gives desires, he says he gives you the desires and the desires are in your heart. The reason why is so that out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. And so if there's nothing in your heart, then there's nothing to speak. And so we have to be careful. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 7 to guard the heart or Proverbs 4 to guard the heart for out of it flows every issue of life and so you have to be really careful in this season what you're allowing to drop from your brain down to your heart because what's in your heart eventually will come out your mouth and so yeah. we need to allow what it what the we have to we have to allow the word of god to proceed from our lips yeah. um romans chapter 10 talks about that um, the, that this is, we speak righteousness, the, the, the word of righteousness comes forth out of our lips. So therefore we have to be people, Meredith, that will speak the word only. And yeah. the word will prevail. The word is already established in the heavens. It is already established. So we can just say um, some of the things that Jesus spoke and gave to us. I'm telling you, this is what brings about every promise of our inheritance. Yeah. And so I, I want to talk just a little bit about the Greek word. The Greek word there for it is finished denotes three things. Number one, it denotes that your debt is fully paid in full. And Meredith and I touched a little bit about that. We talked about when we go to Costco, um, they give you a receipt. I don't have a receipt today, but we, we, yeah. we basically, we haven't been shopping in a long time either outside of grocery bad. shopping. But, but they give you a receipt at Costco. Those of you who go to Costco, those of you who don't, uh, if you're in South Africa, it's a pick and, like a pick and pay. So you go, you go to Costco and they give you a receipt. And before you can exit out of Costco, there is somebody there checking your receipt to make sure that you have all your items and that you paid it in full. And how many know that Jesus at the cross paid the debt in full? But more than that, more than that, Meredith, 
um, it speaks of really um, our, our adoption. Yeah. It speaks of our adoption. Um, when it talks about adoption and redemption, um, and I'm going to get into the next one because number one, your debt is paid, you're fully paid in full. Number two, the sentence has been fully paid. So if you've had a sentence, okay, a judgment, a judgment against you, then it's been paid in full. Part of part of that is is called redemption in the Bible. Right. When when the Bible talks about redemption and adoption, they are correlated together. Um, Paul talks about redemption in the book of Romans and adoption in the book of Romans and Ephesians. Um, I, I love this because it, it says in uh, Romans chapter 8, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy, is really what it's saying. We cry. We have the ability to cry that. But if you don't understand what Paul is talking, because Paul is trying to take the culture, though the terminology is Greek, He's, he's living in a um, Roman culture. He's trying to take the Roman culture to, to bring application and revelation and, 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 and an unfolding of the word so that people can get it to the day that he was at. In their day, the Greeks would bring so many people, or the Romans actually would bring so many people to the, the slavery blocks and they would get redeemed by people who would buy them. Right. So you were redeemed. Even though you were part of some other family, maybe it was indebted, maybe, maybe whatever reason, maybe you did something wrong, maybe you did something good, for whatever reason, you were put on, on the slave block and then you were redeemed, okay? You were bought with a price. How many know that we were bought with a price, not with, not with silver or gold, but we've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Right. right. And if you've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, then you have been redeemed Come on, you've been redeemed from the curse of the law, as it says in Galatians. Come on, for curses every man that hangs on a tree. Thank you, Jesus, for hanging on a tree, come on, that bought our redemption. Yeah. But what is greater than the redemption is adoption. Sure, it's not sure. so much that it's greater. Thank God, it's part of the process. Redemption gave us uh, an ability to be part of a new family, okay? And, and, and now there's a new authority in our life. But adoption, the word adoption in the Greek means the placing of a son. Right. The placing of a son. And so when you got adopted, they would have to take your, they would have to take you down to the temple mm -hmm. and they would give you a certificate. And everything now, that new owner would take your name and he would give you his name. And so now you were adopted and he gave you his name and everything that that new owner had belonged to you. So, so it also elevated you from Big slave time. to, sonship. uh, to sonship. So yes. you go from where we were slaves to sin. The Bible talks about that we were slaves to sin. Right. And now because of the redemption of Jesus, Absolutely. we are free from that. But he didn't just leave us in that place. He took it to another step where in adoption, if I'm right, yeah. your name is changed, which is, which is significant to the character of a person yeah. because names denote character and nature. And nature. Yeah. So once that's changed, now Jesus has given us the bible talks very clearly about yeah. we are a new creation now and Absolutely. and we are a new people so that's all that process exactly. is part of the process of redemption of, of adoption Absolutely. but adoption can't happen outside of redemption Absolutely. so we've been redeemed yep. not by silver and gold but by the precious blood of jesus christ right and so now he has placed us as a son I, I, and, and and when he places you as a son in their custom in the jewish custom you couldn't be placed as a son until you were 30 years of age. Right. And, and so what happens is the father would take the son after he had turned 30 years of age and he would take him outside of the market, outside of the city where business was being done. Yeah. And he would, he would declare to all the people that he has done business with and say, yeah. this is what he would say. He says, he, says, um, he says, behold, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. Now, what he was saying is the word in his mouth is as good as the word in my mouth. So if Meredith was my son, I would say, hey, listen, this is my son and I'm pleased with them. The word in his mouth is as good as the word in my mouth. So when now he comes and he does business with any of the people that I do business with, 
is as good as, listen, and when, he, when I send Meredith or my son to go do business for me, it's as good as if I'm doing business. Right. So don't treat him different. Don't t- treat him any different. He is, he is now mature enough and responsible enough to take the responsibility yeah. of airship, of sonship. And yeah. so that is powerful when you understand that. That's because not only did, when he said it is finished, not only is our redemption paid in full, not only right, is our right. debt, we have no debt. What I love about this is that if you were a slave and you had debt, Meredith, right. if, let's well, say you had... Because even according to the custom, people were sold into slavery because they couldn't pay their Absolutely. debts. You see that in, in, in 2 Kings chapter 4 where the woman's got sons sure. and her husband's dead and the, the, de- the creditors are coming. Yep. And in order to pay their debt, she was going to have to give them her sons. So, so sometimes that whole system started not even because it was your fault. But sometimes it was the debts your parents took on or yeah. things that happened around you that caused people to be in yeah, that, that place. That was the pro- prophet Obadiah. Theologians would tell you and scholars would tell you that that was yeah. the, the, the prophet Obadiah who was taking the some of his case. money. In second case, he was taking his yeah. own money and he was, and he was feeding 7,000 prophets of Baal that he was hiding. Remember when Elijah thought he was the only one, God says, no, I got 7,000 more. The that, prophets ha- of God. The prophets of God, excuse yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah prophets of God that have not uh, bowed their knee to, to Baal. And so, um, therefore, it was Obadiah and his wife that were feeding them. And now Obadiah is dead. And now there's, she, debt. She's, there's debt. And it's amazing how the prophet, because the prophet, I love this, is the prophet fed other prophets. He took and sowed seed in the time of famine, really. Yeah. You know, what happened was another prophet came in and multiplied oil. Yeah. I love this to 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 yeah. redeem and restore them back to health and back to to their proper prominent place yeah. so anyway i love this because meredith not only is your debt fully paid in full your sentence has been fully paid right and that was part of the adoption part of the adoption and the redemption is now your debt is paid in full yeah. your adoption now is your name has been changed everything now that the father has now that your new dad has it belongs to you. You're not excluded. You're no different uh, than any of the other ones that were born, listen, of that family, from right. that mother and father. They might have had seven children. Listen, but you get, you, you're part of the, of the will now. You're part of the inheritance as if though you came out of the womb of that mother Absolutely. and created by that father. That is so powerful. So when we, are, when we are adopted into the family of God, come on, we become bone of his bone, yeah. flesh of his flesh. I'm about ready to just run around this church right now because <laughs> we understand that God does not withhold any good thing from those who walk uprightly. Yeah. And I don't know about you, Mary, but that's some good news that God has paid our debt in full. Yeah. Come on, you might not say, well, I need, to, I need to experience that. Well, that's where you allow the word of God to be dropped in your heart. Once it's in your heart, you've got to let it come out your mouth. We have to be people that speak the word in this season. I'm not telling you to speak the, the news or what's going on around you. We have a responsibility as the sons of God to begin to speak the word of faith. And as we do that, we begin to be faith shakers. And we begin to move things in and out of our lives. And we become, we become powerful, potent people, entities yeah. of God's spirit yeah. to begin to move things. Come on, in the realm of the spirit, we can call things down. We can call things up. We can see things manifest by the spoken word of the living God. So that's, that's some yeah. good news, man. That, that is great. It is great news. Is great news. Mm-hmm. And it's what gives us the ability to really walk this mm-hmm. thing out. Because if it were in our ability, then then we didn't need Jesus. If, if we could have done this thing by ourselves, through ourselves, in ourselves, and if we were good enough in our own ingenuity, our own thought process, our own stuff, then we, we didn't need a savior. But the fact was we aren't and we couldn't and we didn't. And so here's the beauty of it now that Jesus not only paid the price yeah. for you to not be a slave to sin, not only paid the price for you to be healed and you to be whole, but he also paid the price that you could walk in the authority, the purpose and the power right. of which he has. And we can do this and be what he called us to be. So it's not... 
if we just take it, which there's nothing wrong with it, just taking it for the fact of redemption, that's a powerful, Absolutely. powerful truth in itself. But, but what I think the heart of this is today is that we don't have to just stop there. We don't have to just stop with that thought or that concept, but that redemption actually brought us to another vantage point, which is adoption, which in adoption, listen, we all have come, some of you have come from messes, some of you have come, made your own messes, some of you have come out of tremendous stuff, but here's the beauty of it, when he takes you as his own, your name is changed your nature has changed, your character has changed. And I get that in the moment it happens, there is something instant that transpires. Now, most of us spend a lifetime walking out those truths and Mm -hmm. finding the reality of taking it from here, putting it to here, and then walking it out in action. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Christian life really is about, is taking that knowledge, that revelation, and doing something with it. But the more you practice it and the more you think about it, it and the more you let your mind be set on those things Mm -hmm. the more power all of a sudden it has and the more natural it becomes to be supernatural absolutely you know the um the part of the adoption in, in in the roman culture was that once you were adopted it could never be revoked it could never be over so you couldn't do something so bad to make them disown you, forget it, take you off the will once it was done. There was nothing that you could do. And it was, it was, it was as if you were born of, of the mother and father, they, they considered you bone of bone, flesh of flesh. And this is what Paul implicated when he, when Jesus said it is finished, when all things are fulfilled, it wasn't that just he fulfilled the law and the prophets. As he was saying, I'm fulfilling your redemption and I'm fulfilling and paying your debt, come on, in full. And I just, I want to release a declaration right now, right now to some of people that just have an identity crisis right now that you do not know who you are and who your daddy is. You've been redeemed by the precious yeah. blood of Jesus Christ. You have not been redeemed with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ right now. And he's restoring your identity. He's giving to you right now a fresh identity and a fresh outlook and a fresh sense of, of security and, and, and yeah. understanding and awareness of what he is and who he is on the inside of you. The great revelation and the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations is Christ in us, the hope and reality of glory. Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. I'm telling you that Jesus wants to be revealed in this time where it's a little dark and bleak and maybe there's times of uncertainty when we can speak the word, come on, to, 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 when we can speak the word in this dark season, we're going to release a hope in our situation and condition and also be able to release that to other people. This is why it's important that we stay lifted. It's important that we stay stirred. It's important that we stay encouraged because you can't encourage other people. Listen to me. If you are not encouraged yourself. So it's, it's crucial that you guard your heart. Come on for out of it flows every issues of life. And when you can do that, you're going to be powerful and potent person in the kingdom of God. And that's how we advance the kingdom. Come on, we, yes, we advance the kingdom that way. But Meredith, let me tell you the third point. The, one of the Greek words for f- it is finished, it denotes that your debt is fully paid in full. Your sentence has been fully paid. The last one yeah. um, is that your battle has been fully won. Wow. So, it, so it's not just your debt and your sentence or your judgment, but it's your battle. There's, your battle has been fully, that's what it denotes, that when Jesus said, it is finished, all things are accomplished, what he is saying is your battle has been fully won. I don't know what you're battling, but I declare to principalities and powers and rulers of darkness yeah. and high wicked spirits in high places that the battle, come on, is the Lord's. Yeah. I said the battle is the Lord's. In the Old Testament, come on, he, the battle belonged in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat, there was a prophet that stood up and said, you will not have to fight this. The, the battle belongs 
to the Lord. And I'm to declare it to you that we're living in 2020. And when, wherever you find yourself, I prophesy to you that the battle has yes, been fully won good. at the cross. The greatest battle isn't to come. Okay, I don't care what they tell you. The greatest battle happened 2,000 plus years ago at the yes. cross when the forces of darkness came against the forces of light. And guess what? The forces of light won. Jesus won the battle for all yes. of us. That when his death came, we all died. When we were all buried with him in baptism. But when we, when he rose from the dead, we all rose from the dead. And I declare to you that the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is alive and well within our mortal bodies. It quickens us, Meredith. Not just to healing, but to health. Where we can walk circumspectly, uprightly before him as the children of God, as sons of God, heirs of the king, yeah. and release the kingdom of God everywhere we go. His rule, his authority, and his yes, dominion. Absolutely. And so his, the battle has been fully won. So take you back to David. Yeah. In fact, let me read you um, in, in, um, in 1 Samuel 17. We know the great story um, when David was uh, coming again. In fact, it's in my, it's in my book, by the way. My new book right here. Do you have it? I got it right here. I, got, I wrote a book. You guys all know I wrote a book, right? It's called Prophetic <laughs> Journey, The God of Our Tight Places. And anyway, The God of Our Tight Places, you can pull that for me. The, sure. the God of Our Tight Places, um, in, in chapter 7, I believe okay. it is, I, in chapter 7, I, I kind of talk and elaborate and expound about this. But it says in First Samuel 17, verse 40, then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose, this is David, David took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag. He put them in a shepherd's bag in a, in a pouch which he, he, which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. What I love about it is David went to the brook yeah. and he chose himself five smooth stones from the brook. Oh yes, what I love about that is the word brook in the in, in the in the Hebrew means is the word where we get inheritance. So David knew enough before I come and I confront this uncircumcised Philistine, which everybody is calling a giant in this land. And everybody's mm -hmm. scared of. And everybody is is afraid of him. They're full of fear, except for David. David's name means love. There is a generation or a people that understand the love of God that is shed abroad in their heart yeah. by the Holy Spirit. And they, they're going to find themselves at a brook of inheritance. Yeah. And from that inheritance, they're going to grab, come on, the stones. Oh, the lively stones. Come on, the lively stones, that, uh, uh, the word of God. And you know where he's going to put them? Meredith, he's going to put them in a, a shepherd's bag. Now, you might think that's so insignificant. He puts them in a shepherd's bag. What, what's that word? It's everything in, 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 the, in the Bible is so crucial because it, there's types and shadows yeah. that just kind of... A um, story within a story. It's a story within a story. It's revelation that just is continually unfolding. And so the word bag is actually the word keli, which actually comes from the root word kala, which means it is finished. So wow. isn't it amazing that David took the five stones? Five is the number of God's grace. Mm -hmm. He's going to take grace. Come on. Uh, uh, grace is, is, is favor. It's the ability of God. So God is going yeah. to give love. Come on. Uh, an ability called grace. And he's yeah. going to take grace. And he's going to put them in a finished work. That's what's powerful. That's he takes good. the stones. He puts it in a finished work. This is what I always say. The Old Testament is the, really the New Testament that's concealed. Yeah. The, 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 old, the, the, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So every story, everything in the yeah. Old Testament was a type and a shadow, but it all points back to Christ, yeah. Jesus. Of the volume of the book, he said, it's written of me. And so you understand David. David is, is a type of Jesus. And Jesus, David comes to the brook of inheritance. Come on. And he takes up from inheritance the, stone, the stones. And I can prove to you that the stones were the yes of God. Because it takes you back to the Urim and the Thummim, which is the yes and the no of God. What, what is Urim and Thummim? The, Just for some Thummim, people. For, for the Urim and Thummim, Thummim were the, were the stones stone. of the priests that whenever they sought God to find out whether they were to pursue, whether they were to go to war or not. Or it, 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 was, it was really God's judgment of, of whether they were to, it was the yes and no. Just to put it in yeah. simple terms, the Urim and the Thummim was the yes and the no of God. Yeah. Most, most scholars 
scholars believe it was a black stone and a white stone. And so they would reach down into their into their into and their ephod it, like, and, by their heart. By their right? heart. And so he would pull out a white stone meant yes. Black stone meant no. And so anyway, make a long yeah. story short, maybe we'll do a little short teaching on that sure. next week or something. But 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 nevertheless, I can prove to you that those were yeses, that David went into the inheritance of God where the promises of God are. By the way, every promise of God is a yes. Yeah. Come on. That's what the Bible says. It's a yes. And, in, and in him, in him, Christ, amen. So be it. And so David knew that. So David went to the brook of inheritance and he dipped down and got five yeses and put them in a finished work. And it was there that David could take his sling and his staff and run towards the giant. I'm telling you, this is not a time to back off. This is a time to pursue. This is a time to stand up, gird yourself, go to the place of inheritance in your sonship and pick up the promises of God that are yes and amen. There's over, there's over 8,000 promises in the Bible. It's time that we take up at least one or two or five or 10 or 100. I don't know. Just get some information and revelation from the book, man. I'm telling you that the book has enough information and revelation that will bring victory. Why? Because Jesus Christ when he said it is finished, not only canceled our debt and not only canceled our judgment and our sentence, yeah. but my God, the battle was paid, was, was, was won in full. I don't know what, I, I'm coming out of myself because I'm telling you the battle is not yours. You might be battling sure. sin or sickness or poverty or death. I declare to you in Jesus' name, by the power of the blood of Jesus and the power of his word and the power of the resurrection son of God, I can release that to you right now where you're at. And if you can believe it, I'm telling you, let it drop down in your heart. Meredith, let them drop down in your heart so what comes out of it Come on, will be the words that will confront your giant or your mountain. Why? Your giant knows your voice. Your mountain knows your voice. This is why we speak, come on, to the mountain. Yeah. And we're going to speak to them. Whatever you say to the mountain, come on, say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and doubt not in your heart. But believe that what you say and it will come to pass Absolutely. simply when you understand the Christ, the cornerstone that is within you. Absolutely. Say something, babe. No. no, I just, I, I think it's so great. And, and here's the, the truth of it, because I know some people probably watching going, yeah, but you don't know how big my giant is or how big my mountain feels or how big. And those are just, listen, those are just metaphors for whatever it is you are fighting, what seems right. big in front of you. Some people, maybe in today's age, it's, it's the economy and it's what it's done and you haven't worked in weeks. And maybe it's health things and maybe it's yeah. family things and maybe you're quarantined with with your husband or your wife, and you don't know if your marriage is making it out of the quarantine. You don't know if your kids are going to make it through. You don't know some of the things. Here, here's the truth of the matter. Jesus said that if you had faith as a mustard seed, that that's all the more faith you needed. If you would take a little bit of faith and let it be planted down in your heart yeah. and choose to believe. There, there was a man, and I love this story because there's a man whose child in the New Testament is is demonized. He's thrown into the fire. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, he comes to Jesus. And he says, help my son. And he says, I believe, but help yeah. my unbelief. Right. Meaning there's a part of me that believes you can do it, but I am looking at the circumstance. And because I love my child and I've seen the burns and I've seen the wounds and I've nursed him through all of it, there's some unbelief still left in me. And Jesus never rebuked him mm -hmm. for, for that statement. He instead, he moved with what the man presented and was so able good. to heal the child. I just want to help you because sometimes I think we get so caught up on what we don't believe that we forget that there's a part of us yeah. that has the ability to believe. Take what you got. Take the part in you that knows regardless yeah. of the circumstance and focus on that piece. Yeah. And when you do that, God will help deal with all the other stuff that you've seen in your life, the disappointment. Right. the dismay, the distress, all the stuff that seems to, to unravel you at times. And I'm telling you, friends, that you don't have to have great big faith to make this work. You just need faith the size of a mustard seed. Let it be planted, though. Meredith, I, what you just did, you just unfolded something. What, there, there's, there's people out there 
that have that are hurting. There's certain people that need a prayer. They're 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 tuned in right now because they found themselves in a condition or a situation. Speak to that Absolutely. right now. It, well, listen, listen. Right um, if you're at home watching or you're got your phone in front of you, just stretch out your hand as a point of contact and as a display of faith. And Father, today we yeah. thank you for those that are watching. We thank you for those that feel like they've been caught in unfair mm. circumstances. Mm. They've been caught with a giant who is so big. They've been caught in, in a valley where they can't get up the mountain that seems so overwhelming around them. And Father, today we thank you that you take the faith that is within them. Mm -hmm. You take that which you have planted within them. And today we speak life to that. And we say, Father, let that thing grow. Let it, let it grow and let them see every day the overcoming, overwhelming goodness of God in their lives. Father, today we speak life. We speak peace. We speak the ability of God to families, to individuals, to those that are facing their giant. And today we declare that instead of the giant telling them how small they are, that today there's a yes. people who will arise and tell the giant how big our God is. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, we thank you for peace that surpasses all yes. understanding. We thank you for the grace of God, which makes able, and we thank you that it is finished. finished. Amen. It is finished. Again, Absolutely. it denotes that the, that the debt is paid in full, yeah. your judgment or sentence is paid in full, and that whatever battle or war or whatever thing that is, is contrary yeah. has been won. I declare to you in the name of Jesus yeah, that good. at the end of the day, we win. Absolutely. And so I declare right now the finished work of Jesus Christ to be part of your everyday life. May you learn from this Amen. moment forward to fight from victory, not for victory, but fight from the realm of victory and declare the goodness of God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. So that what comes out of your heart is the word of God. And when the word of God proceeds out of your lips, yeah. I'm telling you, we're going to see things transpire and tilt in your favor. I hope this was a blessing to I you guys. Too. I hope this Wednesday was a blessing to those who tuned, uh, turned in, tuned in, uh, turned in or tuned in. Um, we thank you for your time. And I hope this has been a blessing. Please follow us. If, you, if you're not, uh, if you haven't followed us already, follow us. Follow us. If you're a Cornerstone Church member and you have not followed your pastors, listen, take right now some time. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on whatever else we're us, on. Us and the church. Us so that would be church. three different Absolutely. accounts by the time it's all done. But it doesn't all repeat. You get to see parts of our lives. You get to see updates Absolutely. for what's happening in the church. And you absolutely get to see clips and pieces of us preaching as well as absolutely. these kind of messages whenever they come out. So absolutely. It's and, a, and if you're in the neighborhood, you live in the Tri-Cities area or close to and you don't have a local church you attend, listen to me, we're a, we're a spirit-filled, charismatic church. But we, we believe yeah. in... It, we, we totally believe in God's miracles and healings and declarations yes, we and do. we preach the word of God. We love it. If you're finding, wanting to find a, a new home, listen to me, um, write us, place. tell us this is a great place yeah. for you to, to bring your family Amen. and your friends. Listen to me, if you can share this with me, if you could take time right now and just press that little button on the right hand side uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 of your phone yeah. or your tablet or your computer and just it's share this, arrow. I'm yeah. telling you, it'll go a long ways. So if we've been a blessing, Meredith, um, what else do you want to... I just, is, is our midweek service. So before we close tonight, just want to make sure we give you an opportunity to give, to give. and to sow. Um, and yeah, absolutely. We and we do. want to say thank you to Cornerstone Church for being so faithful and so consistent yeah. in doing what you do. Yeah. There's different ways you can give. You can text to give. You can mail in your check. You can also, um, there, what, there's a church center app. There's a few absolutely. different ways and we'll throw the screen, the screen up. Yeah. But listen, at the end of the day, we, we touched on it earlier, but there was a widow in Second Kings who was able to come out of the situation she was in 
because she one obeyed the word of the Lord that told mm -hmm. her go go borrow all the vessels you can and then she shut the door and behind there took what little she had yeah. and as she poured out the miracle came yeah. here's here's the the truth in it that your miracle doesn't come from holding on your miracle comes when right. you let go and so in her letting go she watched the oil multiply and she and in return was able to sell what she had pay off the debts keep her sons and and stay out of the thing that came. Listen, I don't know where you're at today, but I do know this, that the word of God is true and that the principles work. And so if you take what you have and you're willing to pour it out, God will always, always. multiply on your behalf. And I'm also reminded in Genesis, I believe it's 26, where Isaac during famine yeah. was, was commanded by the Lord to stay in Gerar instead of going to Egypt, where yes. everybody wanted to run to Egypt, where everything was safe and they had plenty. God said, stay in Gerar. When he stayed in Gerar, it said in the time of famine that he sowed a seed. When he sowed and he obeyed God and he stayed in that land and sowed, he reaped in that one year a hundredfold. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but may it be a season because we're in famine. Yeah. Come on, but but this, is modern, but, day but this is modern day famine. But I'm telling you, in famine, it's the greatest time to sow so that you can reap. I don't get it. I don't understand. I just know the economics of God are true, yeah. and everything it else works. is a lie. It's the greatest thing that you can be part of as a believer and as sons of the Most High God. Come on, yeah. well, our greatest our greatest need is really obedience. And so we give you an opportunity. We're not beggars. We don't beg for nothing. If you're a mature person and understand that it takes finances to run the kingdom, man, give us some of you who are watching. You're not part of our church, but you say, you know what? That was some good word. I want to sow a one-time gift. You are more than welcome to sow a one-time gift wherever you will find yourself and we will we receive, receive it. It is good, good ground and God yeah, will yeah. bless you because of that. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the message today or tonight. It was a good one. It is finished part two. Remember, last thing, God, 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 God paid in full our debt, our judgment, our sentence, and the battle has been won. That's what's good news, people. That is great. Well, until Sunday. Come on, until Sunday. We'll see you on Facebook Live sometime between now Absolutely. and then. But until then, you guys take care, stay safe, stay home, do what you need to. But keep on speaking, Absolutely. keep on praying, keep on believing, and at least hug somebody in your house before the night's over. From my family to yours, we love you. See you Sunday. God bless. Bye-bye.